Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Mats Villander, and welcome to the Legends Tennis Podcast. Uh, we're going to be seeing you hopefully once a week for, for the next few weeks or a few months, depending on how long we have to wait for the tennis circuit to start again. Um, we have an unbelievable lineup, this first uh, remote podcast. And I have to introduce, uh, first of all, the uh, defending champion, uh, Simona Halep. Simona, thank you very much for joining me. Hello, it's a pleasure. It's first time for me on this app, so I'm excited, actually. Well, you are there. Perfect. Um, we also have Tommy Haas, former world number two uh, from Germany. Are you... Uh, officially Californian by now, Tommy, or are you still? Uh, still, still a Florida resident, but I call myself a global citizen, as you, as probably all You're... of you do, since we travel the world since I don't know age what, you know. But uh, so, but currently, currently in Los Angeles, correct. You're currently in Los Angeles, and of course, you're also the tournament director of Indian Wells, um, the first tournament that got cancelled. And my wingmate uh, from London, Mr. Boris Becker, three-time Wimbledon champion, Boris. How are you holding up in, uh, in the UK? Yeah, that's correct. Nice seeing you, Mats, again. And obviously, happy to see Simona and Tommy here as well. I thought I'm going to put the Wimbledon background since we heard the bad news yesterday. Uh, I, I don't know you what to make of it, but I want to um, talk about uh, in the show today. Yeah. Boris, I think that's a poster that you have in your bedroom. And I'm sure that you're the player in that photograph. Is that true? I don't think uh, it's not in my bedroom. It's not even in my living room. It's, it's one of these new te technologies that you can put in the background. And I was asked the other day before the show, which one I'd rather see. And I said, well, we're of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gives me nightmares. But um, we're going to discuss a few different topics. Of course, we're going to uh, talk about the situation right now. Uh, we talk about how Indian Wells got cancelled being the first tournament in Wimbledon. But first of all, uh, Simona, I want to go to you because you're really the only one uh, out of the four of us that is still relevant, uh, that is still important uh, in the everyday life of the tennis fans. So how are you coping? How are you doing with the, this situation? Well, uh, in Romania, it's uh, pretty bad at this moment. Um, everything got uh, cancelled, like closed. Uh, we have about uh, 2,000 cases and uh, not so many deaths, but it's, uh, it's getting a little bit worse because we have many people coming from Italy and uh, they are a little bit, you know, infected and uh, it's, uh, it's not easy to manage with the hospitals. I was preparing myself uh, before, one week before they closed everything. I, I was... Uh, um, self-isolating because um, you know I got a little bit scared about the virus and about what uh, I was hearing from uh, China and other countries uh, it's not easy and I think for everybody it's not easy um, tough moments because we cannot go out but let's accept it let's um, you know keeping uh, our mind positive because it's the most important thing in these days Anyway, I couldn't uh, play Indian Wells uh, because I was injured, but I was so sad hearing this, uh, this news that uh, everything is going to get cancelled because of this uh, situation. So I think we struggle, I have to be honest. Uh, we struggle, we miss the tour, I miss the tour, I miss uh, the players and the, all the people that are uh, getting involved in all the tournaments. So, um, yeah, but it, I... I can take a positive thing. I'm home uh, since February and I never been so long home since years ago. Uh, and um, it's different life. So I have just to take it and uh, to try to enjoy it. How, how are you, Dave? Uh, uh, Matt, uh, how, how are you, Dave, Simona, in, in, uh, uh, in Romania? Um, uh, what's your routine in the morning? Do you have one yet? Uh, uh, can you actually leave your house or your flat? Uh, is it a real lockdown like it is in the UK or, or you know, in some parts in, in other European countries? Or how, how is your every day? How, how do you keep in shape? Well, I have 22 days, I think, in the house. I wow. didn't go out at all. Yeah. You're kidding me. Uh, wow. Yeah. I wow. just uh, kept it very safe because I'm a little bit scared about it. And I want just to stay, uh, stay chill. 
So um, I wake up around 10, 11. <laughs> so good for you. Good yeah, for you. it's very good to have a lot of sleep. Uh, no alarm, no schedule. So um, I just wake up. I have a late um, breakfast. And then uh, I do some running here in the complex because we are uh, allowed to do it. It's a private uh, residence. You I've know been it? there where you, where you work. Yeah, it's a great yeah. sport. Center. You're right, yeah. Yeah, it's close to everything, but outside you are able to, to run. So I'm doing the running okay. and the training uh, outside uh, in front of the, the block. And uh, then in the house, I work uh, my core, my exercises. So every day I'm working and I feel, okay. um, I feel fit, yeah. Okay, good. Mats? Yeah, so uh, Tommy, we're going to come to you in one second because I'm interested in... Um, and you being the first big tournament that canceled. But Simona, first of all, for you, you are the defending Wimbledon champion. You were supposed to be playing on, on that Tuesday, the famous Tuesday uh, at 1 o'clock, I believe, Boris. Correct me, Boris, when I'm wrong, because you know this better than me. I, I know you How does that feel? You're I not going to get to defend. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to defend Wimbledon. Uh, how, have you thought of that? Or how, how this year, uh, next year, I yeah? Take yeah, I take the positive because I'm two years to defending champion, so I have to, right. <laughs> to live with that feeling one more year. So it's a good thing in the end. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited that I will be able to play uh, the first match on Tuesday, I think, on center yeah. court. So, um, yeah, I really want to face this experience. It's going to be great for sure. Simona, you've spoken to other um, players. Uh, what's their opinion? Are you afraid that this uh, break will be longer than July? What's, what's the word in the, in the women's locker room? Well, um, yeah, in my opinion, it's going to be longer than July. Um, we hope for US Open, but it's not sure because New York now is struggling. Um, yeah, I don't really know how it's going to be after so many months being like off the tournaments and uh, we never been in this situation so I think it's gonna be new for everybody um, and um, I will struggle for sure <laughs> I will struggle to get back to the rhythm <laughs> that you will well, question Simona as well because I'm very curious um, because I remember your Wimbledon final last year against Serena and uh, I must say I think that was one of the best matches I've ever seen you play I mean from point one till the end I mean so focused you always had an answer. I mean, you know, Serena threw the kitchen sink at you and, uh, and you were so calm and played so well. And I was just curious to see how you sort of got ready for that match. What was your mentality going into that final? Well, definitely it's been the best match of my career. That's no doubt. And, um, you know, before the match, uh, I was concentrating only on uh, my memories from Singapore when I faced her in the groups because in the final, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, and I was very focused on um, making her move and uh, being aggressive because I knew that if I do some steps um, backwards, I cannot, uh, you know, I cannot handle her power. So I said on grass, she is the favorite because she has experience and she faced those moments many more times than me. Actually, I was at the first time. Uh, and uh, mentally, I was strong. I said that I have my chance and I have to go there. Are you playing tennis at the moment? I mean, you, you have somebody to hit with or you actually know tennis since February? I mean, that's, that must be the longest break in your life of not being a tennis ball. Exactly. It's the longest uh, period that I haven't touched the wow. racket. Not the wow. ball, the racket. Wow. Uh, since Dubai. And I want to wow. keep it for one, month, or one more month like that. Wow. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I need it after so many years. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. What's the, longest, what's the longest you've ever gone without playing Boris or Mats? I mean, you guys also had some injuries in your career and maybe took a little break uh, after such a, you know, hardcore schedules that we're usually used to. Was there a time where you guys needed to kind of say, I need a break, I'm not touching a racket for, for this or this long? And uh, where you kind of said maybe, okay, was it two weeks? Was it four weeks? Was it maybe even two months? Mats? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know I took a very long break and when I was 20... Uh, 26 years old, I actually quit the tour. I didn't think I was coming back and I didn't play any tennis for more than a year. Oh, wow. Um, but I was a different break. I, I did, was tired. I didn't really uh, consider coming back. So um, 
it, it's, I think this is so hard. It would be hard for me. I mean, you would really find out how much do you love to practice tennis because there's no goal in sight. How much do you love to go for a run, Simona? I mean, I love what's it the, now. Yeah. <laughs> Usually you have a good destination in sight. So for me, I would have been really hard to motivate uh, not knowing if I would ever play a match again. So um, Boris, I know you played a little bit longer than me on tour, but uh, how about you? Yeah, Did you I, go for I've runs never, in the I've forest? Never, I can't see that. Uh, what? Come again? I can't see you going for runs in the forest. Uh, I'm, I'm not the running type, as you know. Um, <laughs> but my longest break was because of injury. When I broke my wrist uh, at Wimbledon in 96, I had to take uh, a tennis break for about three months. So that's the longest I've, I've taken off. Uh, I, I always loved tennis. I never took a long break uh, you know, in the summer, sometimes a week or two. Sometimes in the winter, maximum two weeks. But then I got itchy. I'm, I'm a playing type. I like to play tennis. I like football, like basketball. I always like to do something with a, you know, with a ball. So, so uh, physically, I, I uh, as well. I like the gym. I like to work out. Uh, uh, long runnings in, in the uh, in the forest. That wasn't me. <laughs> but I let me uh, jump in here because I'm not sure, Simona. I'm not sure that if you are aware or not. You might be. But Mr. Tommy Haas here is, to us um, male pros, considered the comeback player. I don't know how many times, Tommy, you came back and you came back to the top 10. You came back and played unbelievable tennis. You came back and beat Roger Federer three years ago when you were 39, 40 years old. Is that correct? I mean, how yeah, did you, yeah. your mindset was amazing to keep doing that. What can you share with, with Simona? I know the circumstances are different. Yes, circumstances are a little bit different for sure. Um, unfortunately, I was put in a lot of those uh, cases due to injuries, due to my body failing in many ways, um, having uh, tendons that were torn and, you know, usually it ended up being or needing a, a surgery. So a lot of the times uh, tennis was taken away from me. And the first time that was uh, the case, that was back in uh, December 2002, when I realized, okay, my first shoulder surgery is coming up. And at that time, all the other people that had shoulder surgery before me um, struggled really getting back to the tour. So I was really nervous at age 24 of thinking that maybe this is it. This is maybe the end of my career. And I sort of just started playing really, really well. And I was sort of, you know, thinking that maybe the chances of me getting to the very top or possibly winning one Grand Slam, which is everyone's dream, uh, were there. And now all of a sudden I was going into the complete other direction. So it took me about 15 months because I needed two surgeries at the time to come back for the first time. But I'll never forget that feeling when I got back. I was different mentally. Um, still a crazy emotional guy on the court, but different mentally in the fact of saying, I so appreciate the game of tennis and I want to play this game as long as I can. And so that was always my mindset. And then, you know, in between those following 15 years um, after that, uh, you know, I did have many, many more surgeries, unfortunately. And every single time I did, I was always roughly out for about a year or a little bit over a year. So, um, you know, I, I always feel like even in this current moment that nobody has really any part in it, except it's a global, you know, pandemic that we all just have to kind of work together now. And we don't know when we are getting back to tennis. It's just, I think a lot of the players, uh, a lot of people in sports in general re will realize what you got is amazing, right? Because you're playing a sport that you truly love, that you've been playing at a young age. You're going to be more passionate about it. You're going to appreciate it more and, uh, and no longer take sort of small things, uh, you know, that seriously about the tour or about certain matches because you're just going to be like, wow, I didn't play French Open this year. I didn't play Wimbledon this year. Um, not because I wasn't fit to play, but because it was taken away from us in some sort of way, a bigger thing, a bigger picture. But so you cannot wait till the following year to the next year already, right? So we're already looking forward to 2021. And I think that's what a lot of players will take away. But now you're the tournament director. You are the first tournament that was canceled. We spoke yep. a couple of days before and I was excited to come and I already booked the ticket and everything. And yes. on, the Monday morning, on the Monday morning, I heard the bad news. So when did you hear about it and what was your reaction? Yes, that's correct, Boris. And uh, we'll definitely look forward and hoping to yeah. have you back in 2021 since it's been a while since you've been there um, as a, also a two-time champion in the desert. Um, I don't even know where to begin because there's obviously a lot of little details that went yeah. into this whole consideration. 
Um, of course, um, you know, I usually get to the desert about uh, two, two and a half weeks before the tournament starts to, uh, to make sure that everything is, uh, is in the up and up and the way it needs to be yeah. and discuss everything with the entire team of people that do a tremendous job of getting everything set up. Um, so we have the Oracle Challenger series there as well the week before. Yeah. Um, and right around that time, during about the second or third day of the uh, Oracle Challenger series, you know, we started kind of hearing more and more cases about COVID-19 about the coronavirus being more serious. I think at that time it was starting to get really, really bad in Italy. And, uh, you know, we yeah. knew that we also get a lot of international fans coming from all around the world. So, um, you know, my boss, Mr. Larry Allison and his amazing medical team had a conversation with us about saying, how are we looking at this? What are the, what are the steps that we are taking? Yeah. Uh, because you were hearing a lot of mixed emotions. We were starting to talk also to the, to the government of California. We started to have some cases now all of a sudden in San Francisco. The cruise mm -hmm. line was coming in. So we're starting to see some action. Um, we didn't have any coronavirus case in the Coachella Valley in the desert up until the Saturday night before the tournament started on Monday oh. for the qualifying event. But as soon as we heard that that was the case on the Saturday night before and the uh, Riverside County, you know, declared a state of emergency. Yeah. But that's when really the red flag started going up and uh, having these talks with the medical expertise days before um, in, in uh, you know, really discussing what we are going up against, um, having the expertise also of Larry Ellison and sort of like the uh, information that you might yeah. say a little bit earlier than, than the rest of us, um, really opened up some doors and some conversations with a lot of interesting people that were saying, look, um, as soon as you have the first case, you really have to start looking at this uh, from another view, another angle. Um, and we also discussed the fact that, look, our event is two weeks. We have, you know, usually uh, during the qualifying days, we have 15,000 people coming yeah. into the ground. And the first weekend, we have 40,000 people running around the grounds next to each other. Yes, it was still... We're still, you know, open type um, a facility, so not yeah. indoor, which they were saying now, you know, we, were not, we don't like the fact that people are on top of each other indoors, um, but the NBA games were still going on with people at that time. Yeah. There were still yeah. Hockey, hockey uh, NHL, um, you know, games were still going on and they were having these conversations of maybe not having spectators all of a sudden. So we were looking into maybe not having spectators, but going on with the tournament. We were looking into having you know, ball kids wearing gloves, you know, having, uh, they, don't, they don't touch the players' towels. All the players yeah. will be in charge of their own. So we were looking at every possibility. No more longer having, did, they have, did we have talks about who's coming, what are we doing, what can we make different for the fans, the sponsors, the yeah. players. We were only talking about what if, what if, how can we do this? How can we manage this situation? How can we look at that situation? How can we maybe have the tournament without spectators? But still, you have all the security people, you have all the staff, you have all the the volunteers, the linesmen, you know, it's, it's just like, how do you differentiate? All it takes is that one person to have the coronavirus to make it sort of a big, big deal. And we're a two big tournament. So it just seemed like as soon as we had that first case, once again, and Riverside County declared a state of emergency, we had to say, we're not having a tournament. It's just a safer thing. And at that time, no sporting event was really stopped. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we yeah. literally were the first. Yeah. And we, when we were sitting, I mean, like I said, all day just in meeting rooms, the entire team scratching yeah. our heads going, how are we going to tell the players that we're not having a tournament? I was just about to go and do the qualifying draw for the, for the, for the, for the ladies. And yeah. I said, hold on, I have to push it back half an hour, push it back an hour. And as I came in there, I said, guys, I'm so sorry to let you know, but we're not going through with the tournament. And it had to be our decision as well, because yeah. it would have been, looking back, it would have been really helpful if the, if the government of California or our governor, Mr. Newsom, would have said, look, you know, yeah. it, this uh, emergency situation, we no longer can have sporting events going on. We are not allowed to go on with the tournament. So it was really on us. And then we had to sort of, you know, explain it to the players, which again, the players were at the beginning a little bit shocked here and there. But then once we kind of explained the situation, they were very understanding. It is yeah. about, you know, it is about, about health first, no question about it. It is about saving lives, no question about it. When something like this comes up, there's always a bigger thing than sports or whatever in general. Health comes first. That's, for, that's, that's the utmost importance of anything. And uh, so looking back now at that certain time, you know, we as, uh, and myself as a player was a very, very hard decision. At the same time, now looking back, we're going, it was the absolute right decision. There's no question about it. And I'm thinking, are these guys crazy? I was excited to come to California. But yeah. now in hindsight, you did the right thing. Yeah. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I got it.
Um, yes. So I'm going to jump in here and ask Simona. Um, for me, so you're a, let's call you a clay court specialist, even though you are the defending Wimbledon champion. Um, I can imagine that for you, this is the best part of the year. Uh, Indian Wells, Miami, the clay court season starts. Roland Garros, and then we hope that we're playing well going into Wimbledon, which obviously happened to you. How have you? Are you thinking about that? This is a disappointing in terms of your tennis career, or is this such a huge uh, problem in the world that uh, you are not selfish whatsoever? Oh well, yeah, that's right. Uh, it's just a world problem, and. Uh... I want just to say that uh, it's safer that everything got cancelled. It's not a small problem. It's a huge problem. And uh, we have just to listen what they say, to stay home and uh, being like very safe. Uh, tennis is not everything in, uh, in my life. Of course, um, I had so many years that it, it's been a priority and it is still. I'm doing everything uh, is possible to stay fit, to get uh, very fast in the rhythm when uh, everything is going to start again. But uh, no, I prefer to stay and, uh, you know, to wait and see. And when everything is going to be safe, I will start traveling again. So if I'm not 100% safe, I'm not going to leave home. So um, everything that has decided has been decided already, it's perfect for me. Uh, even if I miss the tournaments, it's better to stay safe and uh, to take these decisions. But Simona, the experts, so, they change every other day. If I would listen to all the news information I'm receiving every other hour, literally, there is a different change of whatever I said last week is different to now. I mean, do you fathom that maybe this break will be much longer than anticipated? Because you know, here in the UK, they talk about the lockdown for maybe six months and then the virus is gonna come back in the fall. So. I mean, do you have in your mind yet a, a, a worst case scenario? Maybe, maybe that's it. Um, I know the worst scenario in my uh, in my head is that this year is gonna be cancelled. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I'm sure is we're gonna pass this period if okay. we listen and if we stay safe home. Uh, but for the moment, yeah, I think it's gonna be longer than July. Okay. Good. Good to hear. Mm. Yeah, it's but, tough. It's tough. Um, I'm, I'm trying to put some um, humor in that situation, but uh, Tommy, I'm going to ask you, and then, then it all goes back to Simona, Boris as well. When you take a break, what shot in your game is always there? You can't wait to hit it. And then there's a shot that you're like, oh, my goodness. I don't know. When I practice four hours a day, it's not even there. Is it going to be there now after a long break i mean you're so talented tommy uh but oh, simona <laughs> what, what what's not there what what is there what are you missing and what is worries you when you take a break back and down the line <laughs> i miss it <laughs> that's going to be there in your sleep i miss it yeah i was going to say that's there the, the server <laughs> i'm not that. sure if he's going to be there but it's okay <laughs> we can work on it but, but yeah, after, no, uh, after break, which, which parts of your game, I think that's what Matt's referring, which part of you, obviously you play a very physical style, you know, one of the best movers on the game, good ground. But if you're not practice that, that goes away like, like fire. I mean, that goes quickly. You, if, if you have good feel, you're always going to have a good feel. You know, me, I, I believe today sitting in this chair, I still have feel. I just can't get to the freaking ball anymore. But... It, just physically, isn't that something you have to work every single day? Otherwise, it goes away. Yeah, Mats, I mean, you uh, too. Yeah. My longest break was three weeks until this break, so okay. I don't really have that feeling. Knowing how is it uh, after such a long, uh, long break without playing, so I don't know what to expect. But um, the most important thing in my game, in my uh, let's say style, are the legs. So that's yeah. why I keep yeah. running. Because I need okay. to keep, yeah, keep uh, yeah. my muscles uh, activated. So I yeah, feel yeah, yeah. that if I move well on court, the tennis is going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. And Tommy, you, I mean, uh, we, we practiced together a little bit when you started up and then I had this junior team and you participated. So you were also physically, also a very strong player. You had a good ground. So, but which part of the game you were afraid of losing first? 
Uh, well, I think as I'm sitting here and uh, talking to you guys, and uh, I'm actually, unfortunately, the only one that doesn't have a Grand Slam victory here, um, but I, I, yeah. I, I, I fathom the fact that I, I found myself as a pretty good, uh, um, you know, I had a pretty good career overall. Obviously, I think yeah. you're all into it individually, so you always kind of now look back and you say, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? I could have done better here. Um, but my game is a pretty much it's an all-round game. I don't think there's a shot in my in my tennis that I yeah. that I feel like needed a lot of work. Did I do I wish I wish I had a serve like uh, a John Isner or Ivo Karlovic at 145 miles an hour? Yeah, I never had that really. But my serve was overall pretty good. I like my fancy my second serve as well. If my first serve didn't work, um, I had an all-round game. Um, so for me, actually, usually when I did have uh, surgery and I couldn't play tennis for yeah. sometimes six to eight weeks. The most important thing really was to make sure that the body stays in shape, that you yeah. work on your body. If it's more flexibility, if it's more strength, more core strength, work a little bit on stuff mentally. I did other sports, you know, I did road biking, I started swimming. I did many of those things. I think that's really, really the key. And I'm also, uh, you know, I think all of us as well, I mean, we also enjoy life a lot. So I have an addiction of ice cream. So when I don't work out, yeah. I eat my ice cream like every night, just like last night, I had another pint of ice cream again. I, I need to work out, so I'm, I'm trying Tommy, to Tommy, I have to interrupt like, you. I have to interrupt you. Yeah. I've sorry. seen videos without the shirt. You look like you always did. I don't know. what. <laughs> where's your doctor you're going to in California and Florida? Yeah, you're okay. always in great <laughs> I'm not, shape. I'm not seeing a doctor yet, but uh, maybe down the road. But, you know, um, it, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. For me, it's like sort of like that's my vice. I, I love sweets. I love to eat. So, okay. uh, you know, uh, when we have a lot of food on the table, uh, I eat it all. So it's better that I don't even see it. But I'm, I'm making banana bread cake these days. Yesterday I made wow. carrot cake. I love my ice cream, like I said. So I, <laughs> that's, my, that's sort of like my enjoyment. So, but yeah. I do know if I do that, I got to go out and do something. So I try I to see. sneak away. I've got a few friends here in LA, which I'm very lucky and happy about, that have a private tennis court. So I don't see them. But that's where you hit the tennis balls all the time. I'm wondering, yeah. all the <laughs> official clubs are closed. Now I know where you hit the balls, right? <laughs> yes, like I said, again, you know, very, very blessed, very lucky. I get it, you know, in this, in this situation, you know, again, you know, I think we look at the overall picture and you kind of say, look, we are in a pandemic, you know, around the world. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here in LA. I have friends that have a tennis court. I'm with my family. I don't have to worry about the paychecks in the next couple of months. So very, very blessed, very lucky. And I definitely, um, I, I know how to cherish that. But uh, to get back to the point of the matter, yes, I do like to eat. So I do know I got to do something every day. You know, I yeah. follow Arnold Schwarzenegger, one of my idols on Instagram. He does some activity every day, even if it's just 15, 20, 25 minutes. He's 72, 73 years yeah. old now. It looks good. So that's, that's the moment where I'm saying I'm 41, you know. Almost 42, by the way. Tomorrow is my birthday, so thank you. All for right, the oh, all right. Happy birthday. Okay. Um, yeah. all so right. it's, it's, it's happy really birthday. important. It's really important to just find something every day, even if it's no longer than 15, 20 minutes. That's it. Yeah. But, but Max, Max, what about you? You you're skinnier than when you used to play. I know you love your sweets. Uh, well, what what's your secret? Because guys, I'm wearing a big sweater here because I haven't <laughs> been working out lately, and I've been eating and drinking and sitting at home a lot. So, Max, well, what what's your secret? Um, I think my secret is my Swedish passport, because if you have seen <laughs> Bjorn Borg lately or Stefan yeah. Edberg lately, well. we all look yeah. the same. So yeah. um, I think it's a natural thing. Very lucky. I do a lot of sports. I do lots of cross-country skiing here oh, okay. in uh, the Rocky Mountains in Idaho. Uh, I play tennis with a bar machine every oh, wow. day oh, wow. oh, wow. Don't great idea, good idea. <laughs> yeah. yes i okay. like hitting tennis balls and i like moving so it's not a problem but um okay. uh, I'm, i'm very lucky you guys are all very lucky we're all very lucky that we don't lucky. And yeah. tommy i think we, we should yeah. touch on it the fact that we don't have to worry about money in a way that you're not waiting for a paycheck i mean some people are Uh, are really struggling and in three or four weeks there is no money in your account so yeah. um, i think this problem is a big now and it'll be a very serious reality check in about two three months uh, and hopefully we we come out of it okay hopefully we learn something from this situation um we know that uh, planet earth is doing better even though the human beings are not. Planet Earth is doing better because no factories, very, very uh, much less pollution. Uh, rivers are cleaner. The water in Venice, Italy, it's much cleaner. So 
there's some good with it. But um, Simona, I know that you you might have to go for a run in the forest. Um, <laughs> if you want to, you can leave whenever you want because we have a few more minutes and I want to, to ask um, Tommy and, and Boris a little bit about the schedule and when tournaments could potentially take I'll place. I'll stay because so, I like it. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. I, Great. Thank, there you, go. Thank hey. you very much.